In secondary active transport, the energy stored in a sodium or hydrogen ion concentration gradient drives the movement of another solute across the membrane against its own concentration gradient. The original sodium ion gradient is established through primary active transport and ATP hydrolysis as described in the previous video. Secondary transport is using the energy generated from this sodium ion gradient, so there is no need for more ATP hydrolysis. It is analogous to a BOGO, or buy one, get one free deal while shopping. We know that sodium ions are found in a higher concentration in the ECF, and this high concentration is constantly maintained using the sodium-potassium pump. Think of this large number of sodium ions as similar to the large volume of water stored behind a hydroelectric dam. This water can be released and its stored potential energy is then used to generate electricity. In a cell, the membrane is like the dam and the sodium stored potential energy is used to drive the transport of another solute uphill against its concentration gradient. The secondary active transport proteins are allowing sodium ions a way to get back into the cell, to tap into that high concentration of stored potential energy that can be used to drive the movement of another solute against its gradient. If the carrier proteins are transporting the two solutes in the same direction, they are called symporters. The prefix sim refers to the same direction of transport. The sodium ions are moving into the cell through passive diffusion from high to low concentration. As sodium ions bond to the protein, so does the secondary solute being transported, in this example, glucose. Glucose is moving through the carrier protein into the cell at the same time as the sodium ions. But the difference is that glucose is moving uphill from low concentration outside the cell to high concentration inside the cell. The energy powering this process is the stored potential energy from sodium's concentration gradient and its movement into the cell. Here's an example of another symporter that is pumping sodium ions and amino acids in the same direction into the cytosol. Sodium ions, like always, are moving passively into the cell from an area of high to low concentration. The amino acids are moving simultaneously in the same direction, but against their concentration gradients, from low concentration in the ECF to high concentration in the cytosol. If the carrier proteins are moving solutes in opposite directions across the membrane, they are called antiporters, where the prefix anti refers to the opposite directions of transport. This is like a two-lane road, where traffic is moving in both directions, one lane of cars going one way and the other lane of cars going the other way. The sodium ions are, again, moving passively downhill from high to low concentration into the cytosol. But the secondary solute, in this case calcium ions, is being pumped out of the cell from low concentration in the cytosol to high concentration in the ECF. Here is another example of an antiporter that passively transports sodium ions into the cell but is pumping hydrogen ions out of the cell into the ECF from low to high concentration. This is an efficient way for cells to maintain their normal pH balance. We previously learned that if hydrogen ion concentration in the cytosol becomes too high, this will lead to an acidic pH that will cause imbalances in normal cell function. 